when we're talking about size and shape, I really like them big and round. And video game worlds are no exception. Today, we're going to be delving deep into big worlds in video games. So let's, let's dive in and find out. There is a few reasons in which we simply cannot just create a big world and just run with it. And one of the few reasons that we actually do have is we have a massive world. In this case, this world has a composite glider and a lot of tile colliders. The composite glider grabs all of these colliders available over there and basically composites them into one single glider. When the world is really big and we've just modified one single tile, we need to go on on the composite collider and call a collider recomposition. The composite collider will go through all the colliders that this object currently has to update the new collider. The problem with this is that if the world is too big, um, it may take a long time to go through all the colliders possible to recompute to the new collider. That it's currently the reason you need to start thinking about chunking or slicing the world in chunks. But it's not just because of the collider recomposition that we want to slice the world. You see, when we are rendering a lot of stuff and we are sending a lot of data to the GPU, it may be necessary for us to actually avoid sending some things which are not even visible to the screen to the GPU. In this case, every time the GPU or a new frame needs to be created, the CPU needs to grab all the objects and shaders and send them in a draw call to the GPU. What happens is that if our world is really big, we don't have any way of telling the GPU that whatever is off screen shouldn't be rendered. So the CPU is actually preparing all the data from all the world to be sent to the GPU. But in this case, slicing the world in chunks actually helps us a lot we as well can get the great benefit of occlusion cooling. Occlusion cooling is the technique at which we are not rendering things that are outside of the bounds of the camera or the visible bounds of frustum of the camera. Whatever is outside of the bounds of this frustum will not be rendered. If you enable occlusion cooling, that chunk will not be sent to the GPU. Even if it's active and it's ready to be simulated or whatever, you will not render that to the GPU if the camera cannot, you know, see the block out of that. So another reason why we shouldn't just grab a world, create a really big world and get on with it. When you're dividing a world in chunks, what you're trying to do is exactly what I talked about before. You're trying to reduce the strain for the GPU and the CPU in order to render such big sized worlds. What we usually have is a render distance. The render distance is what basically defines how far or how many chunks are we going to be able to see. So, at any time we are closer to a given distance, we should stream in the next chunk. Just that simple. However, this can be done in many different ways. But it can be done with files, it can be done with game objects, it can be done with many different ways, many different approaches, again, depending on which kind of size and worlds you do want to create. Not only large sized worlds can greatly benefit from using a chunk system. Even worlds which are not that big but do have or contain a lot of detail could use a similar approach, basically just a slicing the world in tinier chunks and rendering whatever is visible on the screen or not. This is not, you know, extremely difficult to implement or extremely difficult to, to make happen. And you get such a great boost that it's practically impossible not to find any use case for it in even in your game maybe it's complicated to make it in your game but if you have a map you can surely slice it down with your modeling software or whatever without modifying much of it and that can really help out as well so remember always that it's not just about procedurally generating a world and slicing it on unequally 16 by 16 blocks chunks or whatever it's not just that system. Even if it's just a handcrafted game, if you want to put more detail or a little extra things in, in, in the game, you can get the great benefit of that. Just slicing the world in a few chunks and being able to just stream them in whenever you're closer to them. Programming is just a world of finding an issue. Like for example, the, the, the reason I'm making the video really, it's basically because I was making the game and I, 
encountered this problem with the recomposition of the colliders and I had to cut the world in, in, in chunks and then stream them in and then I could modify all the colliders without really any issue in performance and then I realized that I could as well fill up the world way, way more with way more details and way more vegetation and way more stuff because now I didn't have the overhead of rendering everything and, you know, this is just something that you may not find yourself into in the first games you're making. But when you're making, like, something a little bigger, something that... But then you start finding out all this tiny intricacies of making the video game and how to make it run better, how to make it improve performance, and how to make it run in runtime performance, basically. And all of these things are not implied in, in, in video game development. Like, a video game doesn't necessarily need this, but it's a great addition. So, that was the video I just wanted to make uh, today. The concept is extremely straightforward, and I as well made a document outlining how to make a system like this in 2D that you can easily expand to work in 3D, and I as well improved the system to actually reduce the amount of iterations I went through. So instead of just iterating over thousands and thousands of chunks, I can simply just iterate over 100 chunks and or 100 iterations and find the correct chunks which basically enables me to even run bigger sized worlds without you know <laughs> compromising much of um performance using a for loop which again it's everything written down in the document you can just read it down have a little bit of fun yeah mock me up because it's just a stupid document a stupid thing that i did and yeah just fun fun for me hopefully you enjoyed this video so again see you soon have a wonderful day and bye.